The advocates pushing for unification in New Orleans public schools say that it will provide equity in education, funding, and access for all students. At one point, the water was so deep that trash cans such as this one were floating down the street. It is in this lot located behind me that the coyote has been spotted, and witnesses say there are more than one. At around 3.37 p.m., a pilot and a local broker tried to take off at the Hammond Airport located behind me, but shortly after takeoff, the plane crashed, sending it up in flames. Unfortunately, both are deceased. Tax season is here again. If you haven't filed your tax return this year, you have until April 18th because Friday, April 15th, the normal day to file your taxes, is a federal holiday in the District of Columbia. Emancipation Day is being observed there, which usually falls on April 16th. Courtney Williams tells us about the different options that are available to taxpayers. The Global Wildlife Center is extending a special welcome to Elsa, the newest addition to its giraffe family. Chef's Evening, an annual Southeastern fundraiser, is scheduled for Sunday, March 13th in the Student Union, with President's Toast beginning at 4 and the second part of the event beginning at 5.30. The money raised will benefit scholarship and academic programs at Southeastern. Tickets may be purchased by going on the Chef's Evening website and reserving the amount. In Slidell, Louisiana, lives a horse that people all over America are rooting for a horse named Lucky. The Wind Dancer Ranch Rescue is his new home and is a place of refuge for other abused animals like Lucky. It was heart wrenching and he was so weak we were worried about if he was gonna be able to make the ride home in the horse trailer. He was stuck fighting for his life when Aubrey Stewart says a good Samaritan used a tractor and straps to get Lucky walking again. He was, he was in bad shape, he was a rack of bones, um, obviously, very emaciated. A condition that Lucky found himself in after long-term abuse and neglect. This horse has been abused for over a year or longer, for sure. Um, it doesn't take long for him to lose the weight, but he's got a lot of lacerations and marks on him. Um, so he's been abused. Rescuers at Wind Dancer Ranch rushed him to LSU's vet clinic in Baton Rouge to be evaluated. He's, he's got fight in him. He, he, he wants to live. He wants to live. In less than a month, Lucky has already put on 100 pounds, truly living up to his name. Though they've been busy with feeding and caring for the animals, those at the ranch and in their support community are seeking very, justice very, very for Lucky. Because he was on death's doorstep, and hopefully we're going to catch these people, and, and the detective is going to prosecute. So we're, we're looking for jail time and any other animals that he's got are going to be seized and he won't be able to, and the people won't be able to own them no more. TV, huh? To prevent animal Make cruelty, seizure and consequences, yes, Stewart urges those who cannot afford to keep animals to give them to rescue facilities, yes. friends or he family likes members. To lick and nibble too. Don't wait till it gets to this point because once it gets to this point, that's what's going to get you in trouble. Hello. Animal lovers hello. saw the condition Lucky Lucky's was in eaten. and did not He's hesitate to stall. demonstrate their support. Doing... For North Shore News, I'm Maria Goddard. Scientists at the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Waves Observatory, or LIGO, are credited for being the first to make a groundbreaking discovery recently at the research facility in Livingston Parish. I have more on this noteworthy story. For the first time in history, gravitational waves were detected, but it all started 1.3 billion years ago. If you think of it as an astronomy observation, it's the first time that such, um, such a system has ever been observed, two black holes about that size in orbit around each other and coalescing into one. In other words, the black holes collided, sending gravitational waves into space. The actual event that gave rise to this uh, gravitational waves is an extremely violent event. If it took not as much time for those waves to get to us, that would mean that that event would have happened much closer to us. You don't want events like that to happen very close to us. It took millions of years for these waves to reach Earth because of the event's distance from us. When they did, scientists and researchers at LIGO and Livingston discovered them. This discovery confirmed one of Einstein's theories he made 100 years ago. What Einstein told us is true. So 
it's a, I think in my opinion it's a big difference. So the uh, general relativity, the theory of general relativity is now uh, experimentally proved. When the gravitational waves finally reach Earth, the actual occurrence that was detected was minute. I think it changes the way um, people think of the universe is now different. Now we, we have another device to detect things happening in the universe. The detectors are called interferometers. Both arms create an L shape at the observatory and are each four kilometers or two and a half miles long. These interferometer arms pick up interference, such as waves, and this technology came after decades of research and dozens of scientists around the world. I'm standing on the overpass which goes over one of the arms of the LIGO detectors that first picked up the gravitational waves here in Louisiana. Months of study followed the initial observation before the news was ready to be shared. As soon as they have 100% convinced themselves that this is the real thing, they announced it to the world. But then every day I would come to work and we would do more investigating and it got firmer and firmer that this was the real deal and it was just very exciting. Those first couple of weeks were a blur of activity. Observations will continue at different facilities in the United States and in the future additional observatories like LIGO will be built around the world to accurately pinpoint the location of the black holes. For North Shore News, I'm Maria Goddard. Tours of LIGO's facility are usually given on the third Saturday of every month from 1 to 5 p.m. or you can request another time online. Visit ligo.caltech.edu slash LA for more information. Goddard, who's on location at Southeastern. Maria? Thank you, Tiffany. Women of all ages will be attending the event in the Student Union Grand Ballroom on Thursday, March 24th from 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Here they will have noteworthy speakers and panelists to help educate them on how to present themselves as better professionals and individuals. They will also have great opportunities for networking, so it's an event for all the women to enjoy. Back to you at the studio. And I'm Maria Goddard. Thanks for watching.